Hi everyone, it's Lynn. So welcome back to the Crayon Color Challenge. And this week we are doing, it's week three, three, and we are doing Granny Smith Apple of our colors. Um, it's what we drew on Tuesday. So again, I haven't colored with this yet, so I thought I would do that um, first. But I do have a, let me move this, I'll change the, oh, you don't need to see my, my phone. My phone, look, it's pretty. I've got this cute little, it's very addictive. So you do that, oh, I deploy with that. So um, this, of course, we've determined is kind of ends up being darker than what um, it colors out to be. Because when you look at this, it does look like a true green color on our one of our, this is the J Joan Wolfram um, color tool. Uh, but I'm thinking it's going to land in here somewhere, so I've picked a, a couple of different ones that if it's more yellow-green or chartreuse compared to, you know, this brighter green color. Isn't that, that's neon, like neon green. I like it. I like it. It's probably why I bought some. Hmm. Um, and again, in the Pantone, I think you're going to end up in that area of the Pantone. So we'll see. We'll see. This is... Again, Granny Smith Apple. Oh, wow. So that's kind of interesting. It is more of this green color. So it's, it's I think, going to end up more of these spring green. Spring green color. So that's even got more yellow in it than what I expected. So, you know, you never know till you color these out. That's what I've discovered. So this is... Granny, let's see if I can spell. I'm not a very good speller, FYI. And I don't understand, like I've never understood how people can, you can barely see that, look how, um, but this is week three. Granny Smith Apple, you can barely tell that's on there because it's so, but look how, that's kind of a neon-y color too, isn't it? Uh, this is still brighter. Uh, still not exactly. So, but I do want to talk about, so Granny Smith Apple, this is our green color. Um, it looks like on this color chart, it's going to be right in here with this green. That's the way I'm reading it. So it is kind of a true green. So let's talk about um, some ways that we can combine this green together. So if we look at directly across from green, a true green, we're going to have red. Red, green, and red. And of course, I think every time you think of green and red together, this is kind of close to that green. Well, it's more, I picked more chartreuse, I think. But anytime, to see, to me, this is one of those kind of 50s mimic Christmas. But what I liked about this is it not only had red in it, but it also had this blue and this pink color. So those will go together. Isn't that strange? Like you wouldn't normally, and I think that would be really cool together. But this would be a non-traditional Christmas palette. Because I know when I picked this, I think we all thought, oh, Christmas. You know, it'll look like a Christmas palette kind of thing. So, but I think it's very non-traditional Christmas kind of color. A, a true green would have been more Christmassy. Um, this is another, but I, but I do like that. I think if you put red in it too, that would look good. Now, if your focus is this green, this is going to have to be the most in the block. These would just be little pops of it. So you wouldn't have most of your block, you know, if it's most of your block's red, it's not going to look the same. But look at that, that red, the red and green are classic. They're always going to look good together. Okay, and here's another kind of Christmas. This is probably more Granny Smith Apple. Look, that's closer. That's a lot closer. This is probably closer to what we were looking for, shooting for. But I like the bright red with that. I just loved this with the different animals on it. I'm a sucker for prints with animals. I love prints with animals. And I noticed like last year when I was buying some kind of winter type of prints, I noticed I was buying a lot of animals um, I thought this was funny. I was buying a lot of animals and sweaters. I think there were just a ton of prints out there with animals and sweaters on, and I apparently think that's funny. 
I don't know. <laughs> I like animals and sweaters. Okay, so let's look at this green. This one I think is interesting. And I think this one is classic green and orange look good together. And, and you're asking, why does green and orange always look good together? And this is, this is a little bit more yellow than that one. This one, um, that one definitely has a little bit more blue in it. But green and orange always looks good together. And look, it's bringing in some pink in this print with these cute little kitty cats. I wish I could have a kitty cat, but I can't. I have Salukis and they are not cat safe. Mine are not cat safe. There are some Salukis that are cat safe, but mine are not. And so I would never do that to a kitty cat. But they are neat. I like cats. I do like cats, but I love my Salukis a little bit more. So that's why we don't have them. But anyway, so this green and orange look good together. Now, why do I say green and orange look good together? Well, let's look back here. They're both, um, they're both secondary colors. I actually did a quilt, and I'm not gonna show it to you because it's too big and I honestly forgot about it until I'm just now talking to you. But I actually did a quilt that every block had green and orange and purple. And it's a great quilt, but it was very successful because those are all the secondary colors in your, in your wheel. So they're all secondary colors, so they are gonna look good together. I hope you're seeing, I know this is week three, and, and yes, this is all my theory, and these are all my opinions, and this is my fabric. But that being said, I hope you're seeing that it doesn't matter what color we pick, any other color's gonna go with it. I, I, I just truly believe that that's true. It's that we get caught up in, oh my gosh, these colors don't go together. Well, they do. I mean, they, they just do. I think they do. And that's, you know, so we're exploring it. So anyway, so these are all secondary colors. So they just look good together. But even if I pulled out this cat, right? Cause that wasn't the one I pulled to go with it specifically. But if I pull out the cat and we just look at this, this gray print, and this is a K facet print. Um, and here's, this is a Tula pink print, this art gallery. I mean, that looks so good with those. And those are three different designers. Those are three different fabrics. But even if I wasn't using Kaif, this would look great with it too. Cause it's gonna pop that green, that neon green so well, you know? Um, but I love Kaif and I love Kaif with orange. Look at how that orange just provides another little, you know, I, that would be a gorgeous, that would be a gorgeous quilt. Now, if you are not a bright, color quilt person. In other words, brights don't make you happy, happy, happy. You're gonna, you're gonna steer queer, you're gonna steer clear of those, clear of those. Um, and look at this, this is, now this would be uh, not a monochromatic, a um, where they're right, analogous quilt, where they're right next to each other. So this print has that apple green, well, it's really not. I'm, I looked at this and thought it was apple green, but it's got that turquoisey colors. It's got these turquoisey colors. And then it pulls in this green and then it has a darker green. So these are all gonna look good together, right? And you may not have put them together. I think it helps if I take away the white edges, you know, just so that you don't see them. And I think I said this before, but I I wrap all of my um, fabric in comic book backer board, and I love it because it allows me to see my fabric. If you see your fabric, you will use your fabric. If they is if it is tucked away, you're not going to use it. But look, isn't that that's just a pretty print, and it just has a lot of stuff going on in it, but it can go a lot of different places because you can still add orange to this and that's gonna make it look fantastic. And this is a red orange, so it's not even a true orange. This is a red orange. This is a more of an orange and then we can pull back, you know, some of these other oranges and that's just gonna look great, right? So love that monochromatic or um, the analogous where they're right next to each other on the color wheel. 
So you get those kind of yummy colors. And um, then I was also looking at, like I found this in my stash, and this is kind of close to that green, right? And so this, if I pull out this and I look at this, I mean, this has got that turquoise, definitely that deeper turquoise going on it, but it's also got orange, you know, it's got, I'm gonna pull in a darker turquoise, but I would pull in some of these blues and this orange. But if I really want that green to happen, there's nothing to say that I can't pull that green in for that to pop, right? Um, I just, that is a really pretty color combination. And it's not, I didn't pull the secondary colors in. I'm kind of doing an orange with the turquoise and lime green. Um, that just is, there's no, there's nothing on this that'll say these are the colors that go together, but they do go together. I think designers of fabric do not limit their thought process of what colors could go together. They, I, like that is not a color combination that you go, they're all split complementary, or they're all, and, and one thing about this tool, I don't think I told you about yet, but, um, one of the things about this tool is when you turn it over and see the back, they give you all the things that I've been talking about, like triadic is equal distance apart on the wheel, split complementary is directly across from the wheel, but you ignore that one and use the two on either side. So this would be the split complementary. Do you see what I'm saying? Then they have analogous. Let me make sure this is in the thing. Analogous is all the colors close to each other. And then monochromatic would be, you know, those in a, um, a monochromatic would be the same color, just the lighter or darker of it. And then complementary is right across from each other. So I know we've talked about that a little bit, but this, this tool shows you the pure color and then ways to, to match that. And that's great knowledge. I think that that is fantastic knowledge. Um, but I let... I personally let the fabric kind of talk to me and guide me. And I want the fabric to have a reason to talk to other fabrics. So this is kind of my philosophy. So example, I love this fabric. This fabric's my favorite right now in this moment. This is my favorite fabric. Well, how do I get this fabric to talk to the fabric below it? Well, it's got this green in there. So yeah, they're gonna be friends. So now that they're friends, can I bring in somebody else? Well, this has got that dark kit. Well, that may be a new friend to talk to these other fabrics. Then I will bring in this orange. Now, this, now, even though these don't look like they talk to each other, because this exists, it's talking. They're having a conversation. They find common ground, right? And that's kind of how I build stuff. I kind of look at it like... Could they, could they relate to each other? Could they talk to each other? You know, now as soon as I take this out, those still can talk to each other, even though there's nothing in there with this on it. There's a dog hair. Imagine a dog hair in my, in my house. That's just shocking. So like, I, I'm, this is really attractive to me. It's just an attractive look. So it's turquoise and orange. And I mean, think about that. That's the old Howard Johnson. I mean, without the elephants, without the fat elephants. And this is, oh, and the other thing I want to point out too, like um, these two I'm pretty sure are art gallery fabrics because of how they feel. This is a reproduction 30s print because it's not a real 30s print. This is, I don't know. This is a Jen Kingwell print. So these are all different designers. They're all different time periods. This is a very modern print, but I think it's a modern that harkens back to the 1950s, with the, especially with those like kind of star patterns. That's like a 1950s look to it. Maybe not color-wise, but definitely look. Um, could be 60s color-wise, just because I, to me, Howard Johnson's, the old Howard Johnson motels, which... Some of you may not remember at all, but they kind of had this whole orange and turquoise thing happening, uh, which I just think is a beautiful color combination. I've always liked that color combination. 
And then when you put this green with it, it's just, that pops. That has just got so much going on. And it doesn't necessarily have a thing on the color wheel that I can map out and go, well, this is the theory behind it. And I think that that's what I really want to break people out of doing is thinking that there's always theory behind it. I think it's what inspires you from either that fabric or from another reason. It could be other reasons that expire, inspire you as well. And other reasons could be things like this. So if I look at this, you know, I'm going to say, well, that has definitely orange in it, right? And it's got this real springy green in it, you know. Oh my gosh, those are going to be picked up in here. And this is the this is my jumping off point. I pulled blue. I know I pulled some blue. Um, here we go. It's probably not the exact blue I wanted to pull, but that may be a blue that could be pulled in. I don't like this theme with this because the dog bones don't make sense to me. But apparently I didn't pull the blue I wanted. But like this. This is, like, I can, I apparently don't use my jelly rolls. I just don't. I don't know why I don't. It's, I think, I think we've discussed, it's just not enough fabric for me. But here's this beautiful, that's that beautiful granny apple. And I think that's, well, see, this is still more blue. I'm, I, in my mind, this is the granny apple color of the apple. And that's probably why I pulled all this, is because that's the color that the apple is. This is more blue. I don't think the apples look that blue, but my opinion, you guys can totally disagree with me. This is an old um, American Jane, would help this way. American Jane, you can tell it's old. Look how much I paid for it. Um, you can't get jelly rolls for $30. Uh, so this is, but this line of fabric has got this, you know, green, and then it goes into that baby blue, pulls in bright orange, has a bright cherry red. And what I liked about this, so here's the green. Here, let's move this over here. Here's the green. Then I'm going to pull in this bright cherry red. Then I'm going to pull in this navy blue. What? Yeah, look, navy, dark, dark blue right here. This is a little bit darker, but still, it's that blue. And then it pulls in this orange. This is not the right orange. It's a more true orange probably closer to this, right? This is kind of, it reads a little red on the screen, but it's not, it's orange. So notice how those are very bright primary colors and gives me a very, very different look than the one I did with this. It gives me a very, very different look than the cafe, which had the orange, but that red, I don't know, that loves that cave, right? But it does love each other. These all look good together. Now, I will say I'm pretty sure this is an American Jane designer fabric. It's just not this line. I'm almost positive it's a different line by them. And this is, they did some cute stuff because they had like the rulers, which I always liked. I thought those were cute. I should use this. I'm talking myself into looking at this. But these, um, they did, their stuff is very like a nostalgic 1950s kind of, uh, you know, the, the Dick and Jane books, you know, see Dick run, run Dick run, see Jane run, run Jane run, see Spot run. run Spot. <laughs> you guys remember those, right? You remember the Dick and Jane books that we had. So... I just, I, I want you to think about these colors and how they can live together in a variety of different ways and don't put them in a box where you're going to have just, you know, just this green is going to be only with other colors. Now, let's, let's talk about the quilt behind me. So the quilt behind me, da, da, da. Um, it's green in the center. This is a double wedding ring quilt. If you can't tell, you can't see the whole thing because it's hung up. But um, you'll notice that some of the rings, I, I don't know where to point. Okay, so there's a chicken in the center, right? And then you've got 
the the Argyle print. And if you remember me talking, it was funny because when I talked on Tuesday, I was like, well, this Argyle print that I used drove me nuts. This was left over from the border that I used in another quilt. That was a Christmas quilt, actually. I should have pulled that. I didn't. Um, so, but you've got that red Argyle and then you've got the black and yellow. So black and yellow and red all go together with that green being the predominant color in it because that's the background of the chickens. Um, I'm not a big chicken fan, but I saw that print and thought it was too stinking cute. I just did this one. This isn't even quilted yet. It's just the top hanging up behind me. I got on a bend and I did like four double wedding ring quilts right in a row. One, because I wanted to learn how to do them. And that's kind of how I do stuff. Like, I'll be like, this pattern fascinates me, and I will do it over and over and over again. And I'm playing with color every time. I should, And one day we'll do that. Like, I'll pull out all my double wedding rings. I think I have six now. Um, not all of them are quilted. <laughs> because I don't know if you all saw my post. I think I have more than 17, so don't tell anybody. I may have more than 17 not done. Anyway, but the one behind me is definitely a, um, it's red goes with green and not Christmas. That is not Christmas. Don't you like the way I did the eggs, though? Like the little round yolks? <laughs> I just thought it was funny. I was like, I'm going to put this white in the corner, and then I was like, that looks like an egg, and it's got Christmas. And then the black's got eggs on it. That's what's on that print. And I thought, I'm going to run with the theme. I'm going to make an egg in the corner, and that worked. Anyway, that worked. Now, look at this. This, to me, it's very Christmas. It reads very Christmas. Of course, it's going to be Christmas. And it pulls in all the greens. So you've got the dark green, the light green, the apple, you know, the this apple green. And then I pull red next to it, and it's going to be classic Christmas color. I'm pretty sure this was out of a, um, I think this is Valentine's Day because those look like hearts. But you, nobody's going to know. Like, if you put these two together, they can, they're can they just going to assume that you love them at Christmas, which is all true. Um, I think this one uh, was part of a, a Dr. Seuss line. I don't know who does that either. I'm not sure who does the Dr. Seuss lines. Um, this green I thought was kind of interesting, kind of a modern green, but again, very, you know, analogous. It's going to be on these sides of the color wheel. What I like with this and what we haven't put with it yet is yellow. Look how that yellow kind of blends in there. That really, I have to admit when I pulled this yellow and I looked at that, I was like, that's really attractive. And I can't decide if I like this yet. This is going to but I'm not saying that I don't. Um, I think this was, but I like how this, this print in itself brings in some green. And again, it's that um, analogous look where it's got the blues and the, you know, the turquoisey and then the greens kind of thing. I just love this print. I think I made a little purse out of this, but it's cute because it's all the, it's kind of got a uh, metallic um, part to it. But it's, it's um, what I like about it is it's got all the seed. It was seed packet things. So my grandfather was a florist, and I don't know. I can't grow anything. I'm seriously, it's bad. I do not have that skill. I thought it'd be interesting to look at. Well, look at that green. That looks good with that, too. See? Oh, I wanted to show you this. Now, see? That's the yellow. So yellow and green and blue, that would all look together. You know, I can be inspired by a lot of things. This has green in it. It's a different green than that, more subtle. But if you did red and black and white with green, that's going to look great. And I liked this one, too. Look at that red and this green. It's more subtle. The green's more subtle, more part of the background, but definitely has that hue in it. I, I just don't want you to put in a box where green can only be a certain thing. So this is cute. I love this print. It's got little birds on it on a line, and it says things like giggle and play and stuff like that. But I thought it would be interesting. I think we should always look at prints with black and white and see how they go. All right. So just a green with a black and white prints. 
Do to do. Do to do. I think green would just like be stunning with black and white. That's a, that's a really interesting color combination that you may not see a lot. And for me, that's attractive. Like I will say to you right now, if I'm not seeing that, and notice I just keep moving it around because I want to see it in different things. And I'm looking at I'm looking at the monitor too. Um, but I like. And I know we've seen these black and white prints before because I've shown them, I think, every one now. But I wanted to just match up greens next to it so you could see what a black and white and green quilt would look like. That would be stunning. I just think that is really interesting. Now, and it's almost like, it's almost like the one behind me. That's black and white. It does have that pop of red and yellow in it. But, you know, if, if you took out that red, just left the eggs for your rings, it would look really cute. But you can see, I just, I don't know, I fell in love with that print and thought it was fun. So, that's what it is, it's fun. Um, okay, so, I'll show you this next one. This one I love for a couple of reasons. One, um, this is more muted in the greens. And again, these t this to me is, I'm arguing with Crayola. I really am. That is not Granny Smith color to me. This is Granny Smith color to me of the, the apple thing. Um, this is, y'all may be very jealous because this is precious fabric. And y'all know what a Tula Pink fan I am. This is Tula Pink from her Neptune line, which is like, I don't know, 15, 20 years old. And this is Tula Pink Hushabye Baby. Um, and uh, it's just, so look, she puts green with pink. So if she would did green with pink, she did a pink. Now that's brighter than what she did, but that's green and pink together. She also did a blue in this. That's a little bit brighter. And she hit it with brown as well. Look at those browns, those muted browns. So if I did this and just had a hint of that, that's an interesting quilt. That is an interesting quilt. Now, you could go more dull on these pinks and green, or pinks and blues, and definitely more dull. And what I mean by dull is, notice is that is not a strong brown as this is, right? So it's got more white in it. It's, it's, it's a different um, shade of the brown. But isn't that interesting? This is kind of where we did that, and that would be an interesting quilt. Now, I will say this one will only be cut up for very precious things because this is rare fabric. You cannot find that anymore. Um, and I, I think, I'm not sure. I haven't gone out to look at what they're worth because I don't want to do that. So we've looked at green. So this is a quilt I did. I'm just going to lay it out so you can see it. But isn't this pretty, this is a quilt. So this has got that green in it. And some of the, um, right here, some of the ones you just saw, green. And then it's got these muted blues, right? So these blues and turquoise go with this. But I matched it up with this dark, and all this is, y'all, is half square triangles. This whole quilt, and it's just a little wall hanging, and it's not quilted yet but it's just half square triangles. And what happened was, is I made a quilt that I made too many, <laughs> I made the half square triangles too big. So I found a, um, this again is not finished yet, but this is a quilt. Should have laid this out better. Um, of a, this was a cute, and this is not too old. I think this, um, this was a, uh, a panel that I cut up, and it was a panel of all these different bears. And, you know, part of my family, whoo, I had the mountain of, the mountain of fabric almost fell. Uh, a part of my family uh, was, I think I said this last week, we, were, we spent a lot of times in the Smoky Mountains. And so the black bears are part of the Smoky Mountains, and I love the Smoky Mountains. And so anyway, um, I found this panel, and I love this panel. And this is, this block is called Lady, Lady of the, 
Lady of the Lake. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the book. Lady of the Lake. And it's all half square triangles, super easy. But I cut up the panel and then mashed it with these blocks. And the blocks were determined by how big this was because I knew when I cut up the panel, my picture was so big. So I had to make the blocks where they were gonna match that. So I didn't, I didn't wanna put sashing because I wanted it to have this, you know. Um, but these are all just greens, greens and blues. And it, all I did was match some of the greens and blues and yellows and kind of these um, uh, kind of greeny yellows match that to the flowers, you know, you can see in some of it. And these blues came from the trees and stuff like that. So I really let this panel tell me what I wanted to do with this. And I'll try to take a picture of this and put it um, on stitches or something on the website so you can see it. But this is just a, just a panel that has that green that's just using black. And it wasn't until after I had the thing done that I found this uh, border, which was just, this was Christmas, y'all. This was in the Christmas. This green plaid was in Christmas. So it was whatever off because I bought it not Christmas season. And that looks perfect with this. So don't let, you know, a certain, there's nothing in this pattern, in this fabric that says I have to live in a Christmas quilt. There's nothing. It can live in whatever quilt you want it to live in. And don't like just pigeonhole things into certain places. So anyway, that, I just, you know, I, I like the Smoky Mountains and I love bears and I just think they're fun. And so I called this, um, I think one of my call it's Bear in the Lake because it was Lady in the Lake block. Or is that the name of the block? I'm gonna have to look it up now. It's bugging me. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Lady in the Lake block. Um, but I but I think that that green can work with all the other greens, and I, I think the bear quilt's another one that you can say. You know, there, I remember when I first started quilting, they and someone said you can never get reds to match, and I soon figured out that you can never get any color to match. Like yellows are hard to match, greens are hard to match, blues are hard to match. Um, and what I mean by is this exact color of green. Can I match this exact color of green when I take it to the store and, and run it up against all the other patterns? Because this fabric doesn't exist anymore. This is gone. This is only lives in stashes now. You cannot buy this anywhere because um, it's super old. Because <laughs> it's super old. Uh, so, because it's in my stash, though, I still want to use it. Well, just because I can't match this exact color doesn't mean I can't use it if I don't have enough. You, what you do is you do what I did with this bear quilt, is you get all the greens and all the blues, and you put 10, 15 different ones that are in that same monochromatic or uh, analogous colorway, and then that'll look good together. I think the more, if you put three, then people go, oh, maybe those don't match. But if you put 15, nobody's gonna pick it out. Too many choices. It's too much going on for them to say that's not gonna match, right? Just too much going on. Okay, so that was those two. And then the last one I wanna show you is this one, and I'll turn the overhead for this one. This is a pattern I did called, um, Diamonds are forever, right? So I do want to do both. Let me stretch this out just a little, okay, before I turn this on, because I really think you're gonna see, this is probably the closest to our green, to the real Granny Smith green. Let me turn on the overhead. Okay, this is a pattern called Diamonds are forever. This is uh, a pattern that is um, improvisational pieced with what I like about this pattern and when I teach this class and I probably should teach it online but it's really one of those classes that's better taught with a group of people live um, because it's improvisational pieced kind of 
So what I mean by improvisational piece is you can follow the pattern and do exactly how I did it. So these are one by two. These are, you know, four by two. These are five by three or something like that. So all of the diamonds are different size. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, right? So they have different sizes. So what's improvisational about it is when we put it up on the design wall, you decide how many of this size you're gonna make and how it's gonna go up next to each other. So everybody's quilt can look totally different. What I did is I decided I wanted this green as the background. So you can see there's a lot of stuff going on in this. There is a lot of, of things going on in that I just figured out how all these things could talk to each other. So when I picked the green as my background, I wanted my standout one to be this pink grunge because I knew these were very contrasting colors. So I wanted the pink to stand out. And then when I picked the other fabrics, I decided I wanted to live in the greens and the, the and then have different shades of pink and yellows. And then I like, like for this one had this cool horse in it. I think this is a, uh, I could be wrong, but I think that's one of the old cotton and steel patterns. Maybe wrong. Um, but this is a lot of modern fabric, right? So it's got a lot of modern stuff going around. It's got, chevron oh you can't see that so it's got these chevrons right here it's got little images diamonds but notice how everything goes together because i've allowed this color to talk to that horse which justified it because that's going to show up different places on the quilt right and i use enough of it that it allows your what you want to do when you're designing a quilt, what you want to do is you want to allow your eye to move around the quilt so that it has interesting things to look at. I think there are, for me, and remember these are my opinions, but for me, if there's a quilt in a quilt show and I see it from a distance and it catches my eye, okay, that's, that's number one, I'm interested. As I walk up closer to it, I notice more details. And if you're at a quilt show, you walk up even closer to it because you want to see where all the stitches are. And it's hard to see that on these that aren't that aren't quilted yet. But you want to see where the stitches are. So there's kind of three levels of people being drawn to your quilt and where their eye wants to go. Um, and I want to I want it to be interesting no matter where they're looking on the quilt. To, to for their eye to be drawn there, right? And that um, it either doesn't stop or it draws you to the next area. And those, those are what you find interesting about quilts, right? Um, and I think quilts like paintings in a lot of ways because the quilting adds so much to it. Because I tell you, even though I'm showing you some of these quilts that aren't quilted, once you add thread on top of that, it can change the quilt. It can change the quilt. It can change a color of the fabric of the quilt. Especially if it's heavily quilted, it can change the quilt. And I know that because I've done it, right? You can be like, oh, that's yellow. And I put red on top of it, and it will change that yellow. It'll change it every time. But a lot of people are scared of putting colored threads on top of that don't match the background. And I'm like, mm, you should. It'd be. It's just so interesting if you do. So, I don't know. I think that hopefully, hopefully, we've looked at another green, or we've looked at Granny Smith. Where is it? I lost it. I don't know where it is. Okay. I don't know where it is. So, we looked at Granny, oh, here it is. We've looked at the Granny Smith green, which this is, this is the perfect one. I'm glad I pulled this. The Granny Smith apple green, and we can see that it can go with every color on the color wheel. Just like brown, just like goldenrod, whatever. So I, I think it would be fun. I, I mean, I still think this is fun. I can't wait to do the next one and see how I pull next stuff. So you've seen muted, you've seen analogous, you've seen monochromatic, you've seen no plan of, you know, this one and this one. 
Um, I just think there's a lot that we can do. Ooh, this would have looked good in here. Hmm. Um, I just think there was a lot we could do with green. Green is a great color. I think I said that about brown and... I might have said that about brown and goldenrod, but green is a great color. And Granny Smith's green is a really good color, too. So don't be afraid to use green. Don't be afraid to use green a lot because it is a versatile color. Um, and pull green. Pull your gra Granny Smith greens. Take a picture of some of those. And, and I think, remember, too, like... The quilt behind me is successful because green stood out, right? Um, and it's a background color, and I didn't depend on white, and I didn't depend on a neutral, a neutral, as my background color. I tried to use something that was a big print, and, and that's another thing we should talk about. Maybe, maybe next time we'll talk about, you know, what quilts and blocks are great with big prints. Anyway, so. Thanks for joining me. It was great fun. And um, we will talk about the next color, which I've lost my I've lost my crayon box. There's so much, there's so much fabric over here. <laughs> I just kept moving it. Um, so we'll talk about the next color on Tuesday and have a great weekend. Please like, share, and sub and subscribe, turn on the bell, do all the things, do all the things. Join us on Facebook. I really try to read every comment. Um, and tell me what you think of green. Did you love the ideas? Did you hate the ideas? Did you like, I will never put green with pink and blue. That looks horrible. You know, that's fine. Tell me. Let's all talk about it. See what we think. Anyway, so like, share, and subscribe, and we will talk to you on Tuesday.